could you could you give us a sort of broad overview on the activities taking place uh, at Rolls Royce India? Thank you very much, Atul. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, you know, where do I start? Is always the question when you ask such a broad question, right? But um, you know, Rolls Royce is in three businesses, and we are in the civil aerospace business, we are in the defense business, and we are in the power systems business. Now, Rolls Royce in India, I think we sort of started our journey back in 1932. And uh, since then, we have participated with the Indian Air Force, with the civil aviation, uh, with the defense um, aviation, with the Indian Air Force, the uh, civil aviation, and, the, and, um, and also with the naval aircraft. And then back in 1956, we formed a sort of a technology transfer agreement with the HAL, right? And then uh, over the period of time, we've been selling in India, we've been participating in India with HAL in defense. But then around 2010 is when really we started saying, or 2005, we started saying that we need to leverage the capability and the capacity of India. So we started generally with the engineering services outsourced, and then started picking up momentum around 2010. Right in 2010, we decided to form a joint venture for manufacturing in India, which is today called as IAMPL. And uh, it ended up being one of a, a very successful ventures and uh, it kind of kick-started our journey. The engineering was kind of on and off, but then with the manufacturing coming in, and I think uh, India also starting to move the needle in a lot of areas, us winning the Hawk order. I think all those things got into the picture in around 2012 onwards. And uh, I can talk about that period because I joined Rolls Royce in 2012. I think we've been starting to ramp up our activities in India. And so we moved from a journey of outsourced engineering to having uh, you know, capability building within our own teams, uh, building our engineering portfolio, building our joint venture completely. We went through a lot of trials and tribulations during the process. But then uh, we, we, after that, immediately after that, we had the R Square Data Labs. The digital team was built out of India, mm -hmm. right? And then we started building out on the uh, business services teams. And then we formed the second joint venture for power systems in Pune. And then we built the engineering teams in Pune. So, you know, from what used to be a sales process, more like a trading outpost, we become a fully operating business here in India, right? And now we are looking at how can we do more in terms of uh, co-creating products in India. We are looking at how do we serve the globe from India. Our joint venture in Pune is going to be exporting more than it is going to have domestic consumption, right? So I think a lot of... Um, a lot of um, a lot of the things that we have done during the journey, there's a lot of learnings that have happened for us. But then at each step of the way, what we found was that India was also moving forward and creating the foundations and the platforms. And we as a company also figured out that each and every platform or each and every foundation has a value for us that we could build on. And I think as you, you know, I don't think I need to say it, but I will anyways, is that India is not short of, short of capacity in terms of people, and India is not short of capability. It is just bringing that capacity and capability together for the benefits of individual companies that was always the, that intersection always was very small. But then the intersection has kept on growing, and today we are at a point where I believe uh, we will probably co-create products uh, and services with India into the future. Would you say that absolutely with the quality of talent that's available in India, you know, how are you looking to you know, do staffing, um, sourcing of engineering services, and even you know, enhancing the supply chain for Rolls Royce uh, in India? See, when we hired 500 engineers, we had like 86,000 applicants. Okay, and we had to invent a new method to interview people, which was all video interviews initially, and then take about uh, 5,000 people bring it down to about 1,000 people and then face-to-face -face interviews with 1,000 people. And we did all this within 18 months. We hired all these people, trained all these people and delivered to global standards with all these people. Look, any operation in India, for it to be successful, what is extremely important is the say-do ratio. Mm. In my view, we have to say what we will do and we have to do what we say. Right? As long as the say-do ratio holds, then I think businesses can continue to grow in India. Mm. So in our case, Yes, the talent was great. Yes, we had to make sure the talent fit in within our culture. Yes, we had to make sure the talent understood what needs to be done for us and then deliver on the same. Right? So I think that journey was a very rewarding and a learning journey. Right? And then if you look at manufacturing, 
we hired people at our Iample joint venture that were mostly engineers, right? And some of them had even PhDs. And one individual there, when we sent them for a training, an apprenticeship uh, program, he topped it all and he finished it within three months, which was never done before. So, I mean, when people say talent, I think India has got talent. It is just that the match has to happen of the talent to the job. And the company has to probably hold hands of people for a little bit initially. But I honestly feel that talent has never been the issue. But making sure that the talent delivers to the company is the responsibility of the leaders of the company. And I think that is where it becomes very important for companies to look at. In your opinion, what are some of the areas of India's manufacturing strategy that probably needs review or uh, tweaking, shall we say? Uh, look, I think, uh, you know, look at how the services grew, services industry grew for India, right? It is, it is a classic you know, case where there was a need in the world, right? And so we said, we're going to fill that gap. And we started small and we saw a new area. We saw an opportunity. The talent was available, uh, skilled labor force, skilled in terms of culture to do the right thing and work hard. And uh, also language, right? Which was all differentiators compared to anybody else in the world. And look at the services industry take off. Similarly, in manufacturing, I think there's got to be some differentiators created, right? And in the service industry, we looked at cost arbitrage. So when people came in and said, oh, I got call centers, so I got low cost labor in India. So yes, that's a great start, right? But then they all graduated, became BPOs, KPOs. So they became, you know, partners, which kept growing up in the value chain. So in manufacturing, so we can start with cost arbitrage, but then cost arbitrage is not the only thing that's required. There's got to be a value arbitrage. And the value arbitrage is the world has enough locations that can give the cost arbitrage today, right? When there is scale, China will beat everybody in the world on cost. But what is it that is going to differentiate India from the rest of the world, right? We have a solid, and I love this three Ds that I've heard for the last eight years at least, right? And I think, the demand is domestic. There is domestic demand, which is very good, right? It creates a buffer. As in business, what we want is you don't want too much of fluctuation. So when there's a domestic demand, then your fluctuations are minimized. Mm. Right? So when the exports fall, like for example, with COVID, when the whole world shut down, the domestic demand kept going. Right? So that we have. Then we also have a demographic dividend, which is very good, right? We have a lot of young talent, very innovative talent, very creative minds. We have that. And then we have a very stable democracy. And I don't think we should forget these things. These are very important things because if you look at the world and we look at the geopolitics, these become very important uh, foundations for us to grow wherever we want to go, whether it's services or whether it is manufacturing or whether it's agriculture. I think these are all very important you know, foundations to have. So now when we have that, we have put the focus on it. Make in India has put a focus on it. Atmanarbar Bharat has put a focus on it. Yes, there are focuses and visions created, but that is not going to be enough. At the end of the day, if you want to be a manufacturing hub for the globe, like I mentioned before, we got to understand what is it the world wants and why is it that India is the place to go. Number two is how do the companies account for it in their business cases? Right At the end of the day, when they put in a manufacturing facility, there's got to be a demand that should be there, which we have. And how do we spur that demand? And I think when the demand curve is shown, the business case becomes stronger, mm. right? And the third most important thing is for us to understand there's got to be quality and the sale ratio, as I mentioned. Execution is the key. In our joint venture, right, at Iampu, we are the best supplier to Rolls Royce now in the world for those components. Oh, interesting. interesting. Right? Where did we start? A greenfield site. I was there when there was groundbreaking happening. And today we are the best supplier for those components that they manufacture. Is it possible? The answer is yes. Please come and visit I am. Right? But do we have the talent? Absolutely yes. Did we have challenges? Absolutely yes. Right? But can the challenges be overcome? Yes. So people are a little bit, you know, yes, ease of doing business, make it India, Atmanar Barbarat, a lot of focus from the government, which is very helpful. There is a competitive federalism and a cooperative federalism, which is, I think, a great initiative also. 
because I think states are now taking it seriously. And when you put a facility in a state, I think the states are all pushing and making sure you get the benefits there. And by benefits, I don't mean just incentives or free money or anything like that. I mean the ability to do my business at peace. Right? And I think that's been there along the way. I can, you know, we don't have the time for it, but I can probably share so. 10, 20 stories of how we, how we had close calls of what we were doing. Right? But towards the end, I mean, all's good. The end is good so far. We are growing our business. We'll continue to grow. So I think this manufacturing thing, regardless of what it is as a percentage of GDP, mm. right? the percentage matters if your GDP is stagnant. If your GDP is growing at a very rapid rate, your percentage doesn't matter. So that's the way to look at things. Right. I wanted to understand some of the unique initiatives being led out of your engineering centers. In so look, I mean, it's a combination, right? I mean, we do work where it's a combination. So some of these work is like really mundane work, like CAD drawings and making sure drawings and technical manuals and other stuff. So we kind of have a model where we kind of the, the work that can be outsourced, we kind of, you know, have partners like Infosys and TCS and many others. But... Um, you know, where the work cannot be outsourced and we have to do it because of our own requirements with export control, state data privacy, IP, whatever it is. So we basically have engineers who do that. And then we are programs, right? The major new product introduction programs were done in Bangalore as well. It's not like Bangalore is the only place it's done, but it was done in Bangalore for civil aerospace. And it was also done, there was total coordination between our centers in Derby, in Dalowitz, and in Bangalore, right? Now with defense engineering, we're working closely because defense is a lot harder because in defense, what happens is that you've got to, there's more stringent rules around what can go back and forth between nations. And so we have to make sure we adhere to all the rules and laws from all the different nations. And so we do that. And so there also we do work which are, starts with component level, but can also go to system. Level. And in Pune, it's the same thing with Rolls-Royce power systems, right? And there we do component level all the way to systems level. So, I mean, in terms of centers of excellence, it's not like we have only one product that we look at, but we look at all the products at different levels of the maturity in each of the products, right? And then we have a services center to do all local servicing. And then we have the digital center in Bangalore, which does a lot of analysis on all the data globally on services. And they're able to, we are able to give cost savings to the company through the data analytics works that are being done in Bangalore. And it's not a routine job of taking some Excel spreadsheet and doing it. It's about creating the algorithms. It's about, create, it's about sifting the data. It's about making, it's a high-end work wherein you're really doing more and more of intelligent work, right? You're not doing the routine work. You're doing the more thinking work where you have to create the algorithms. You have to have knowledge on what the algorithms should be, what are the statistical principles, and so, and then we also have deep learning techniques. We also have machine learning techniques and we are trying to put artificial intelligence on top of it. So all these are like, you know, there's so much going on. If you talk to me about eight or nine years back when I joined this company, I would be able to answer half of the things that I mentioned right now. But I think uh, it's been, uh, it's been the capability curve for us has grown tremendously and uh, it started off as a capacity curve for us. Well, I mean, look, we are, we are participating with our XWB engines. Those are the those are the most recent engines for Rolls Royce that flies the uh, Airbus 350s uh, predominantly today. And those XWB engines during the initial phases, when we are going through the testing and when we are going through even the design of the engine components, the Bangalore team was completely involved. And because, like I said, the spectrum is not like one area, like a combustor or something. It mm. is across a wide area, and the majority of the team. Uh, there were a lot of people involved in it in Bangalore. Similarly, Trent 1000 is another engine where we've done a lot of data analytics work, right? And we continue to do all this work with the Bangalore team, right? But now these are products that are flying. They started off when these products were in the test pitch or even pre-test pitch, and today they're flying, right? So I think that's a little bit broader than an individual component, but that's because we address a lot of components. You know, if you could elaborate, you know, some of your partners, important partners in the aerospace domain, what would you look for in, you know, getting getting a supplier into Rolls Royce? Sure. In terms of suppliers, look. In terms of engineering services, we are uh, we are partnered with Infosys, we are partnered with TCS, right? And there are many others. And then in terms of our suppliers for manufacturing components, we have um, we have the uh, we have 
Iample is our major one. It's our own supplier. But then we have uh, Godrich, right? We have Bharat Forge. And um, we have uh, Dassel. We have Tamil, right? And many others, right? So, but the thing about the manufacturing supply chain of components, it's a very long process. Hmm. And so the expectation from the suppliers, we don't have a chance to have any defects. So the, the approval process is very rigorous right. and it's time consuming. But at the end of the day, when it is done, then the work continues with them for a very long time. And it's been a very successful journey, you know, from with the Tatas, with, uh, with Godrej and with uh, Bharat Forge. So we continue to do that. And now we continue to look for opportunities everywhere for all three businesses, right? Whether it's a defense business or power systems or this, we continue to look at it. And let me not forget, HAL is a, is a very unique, uh, you know, unique uh, company for us because HAL is our customer, mm. HAL is our supplier, and HAL is our joint venture partner, right? So for us in India, HAL has been a lot and we've been uh, very, what should I say, privileged with our association with them since 1956. And it's similar with the Tatas, and it's similar with Godrej, and it's getting very highly involved with Bharat Forge as well. So I think the, the partnership model that we do with most of our suppliers works very well. Mm. And we are all very closely integrated in this whole journey of creating the components and making sure they work forever.